Welcome back to Let's Play Mother Russia Bleeds. Last time we completed the squat, now we're heading on to the train, and we're on to our last character of the game, Boris. Boris is, like Sergei, he's pretty balanced, but his emphasis is more on range and power rather than speed and jump. I don't actually play as Boris too much, mostly because if I'm looking for power I usually just go Yvonne. But, uh, he, he's okay. He does have, uh, one unique move to him, which, uh, I'll hopefully show off shortly. Today we are skipping over Blue Lagoon, actually. Blue Lagoon is only useful in multiplayer mode. What this does is that it heals the same amount as the, uh, Kremlin Colonel to yourself, but if injected into an ally, it heals double, basically about as much as Purple Rain does. This makes it really useful for multiplayer. You should probably always have someone using this if you're playing multiplayer. But in single player, it's completely useless. You can't even go into Berserk mode with it. So we'll just be skipping over right to White Russian. White Russian uh, directly affects the muscles. What this means is that your punches in Berserk mode, when they kill, they make people explode into gore. I don't know if you actually get any stronger in Berserk mode under the effects of this, but it sure is fun to watch. It only comes with two doses, uh, and I'm, I actually haven't used this one too much because it doesn't really carry much benefit. But, uh, we'll see how it works out. It at least has a longer Berserk mode than Kremlin Colonel. Let's go! Hmm, the game kind of hung up there a bit. That's weird. Eh, hopefully that didn't mess up the recording too much. But if it did, it's these, these videos are pretty short, so I can just record it. Re-record it, rather. But yeah, Vlad, we were told Vlad is at the train station, so we're just looking to have a chat with him. Now, I suppose you might have noticed this at the point, but there doesn't really seem to be any difference between what the characters say in terms of personality reflected onto their dialogue. Uh, this is because the dialogue is more or less exactly the same for all the characters. The only difference, I think, is that uh, the pronouns get changed around if you happen to be playing as Natasha. Yeah, but who? The thing that's possibly the government? Hmm. Ah, so the Bratva has the backing of the politicians at least. If you say so, Vlad. So he's looking to inspire riots, but not get his own hands dirty. Yeah, things are pretty bad right now. Yeah, our, our goals are a bit more simple than what Vlad is planning. Yeah, and I imagine uh, you're not going to get off too easy and... Uh, these guys trying to break it up. Hmm. I uh, think these guys don't know who they're dealing with.
<laughs> Classic. Alright, so actually something that I can show off, uh, since Boris is one of the best characters to show it off. You have a taunt function in this game. Uh, let's check out what Boris does. Lovely. Uh, the only taunt in this game I actually haven't checked out is Yvonne, strangely. I just always forget to do it when I'm playing as him. Anyways, Boris has that as his unique move. Uh, hold on, if I can just beat this guy up I can show it off better. Alright, so you can charge it with X, or you can just instantly do it by pressing uh, down and grab. Like Yvonne, Boris cannot uh, do that ground slam into grounded pummel. I thought everyone could do that, except Yvonne, but no, Boris can't do it either. And uh, sometimes the AI just does that, where they'll watch you pummel the hell out of their enemy, or their allies, rather. Sometimes when you do uh, the backbreaker slam like that, it'll knock guys over, but it doesn't always do it. I'm not exactly sure what the enemy positioning has to be for it. I've been messing around with the uh, grounded charge attack, and I've actually found, at least in arena mode, it can actually be pretty effective to do like a couple punches, then a charge attack, and back off to get some good damage in before uh, enemies try to knock you away. Yeah, the guys here are pretty wimpy right now. Oh, uh, that's one way you could put it. Vlad seems really insistent on getting us to join his cause, and I can I guess I can see why, uh, if it's eventually going to become a violent revolution. Just a heads up, the train is one of the longer levels in the game. Uh, you saw my time for the level is uh, 18 minutes. Uh, uh, that is just the first time I played the level. Uh, the other time I was playing it, I was playing with my brother in multiplayer, and we were kind of just messing around. Uh, that's just mostly because I died a few times, but this is also just a very long level. Hmm. Oh, well, his accordion playing skills aren't bad, but his vocals could use some work. And lyrics. And basically everything else except the uh, accordion. And maybe just the accordion on principle for some people. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> These guys really don't uh, know what they're dealing with. Oh, I can't believe I got hit by that. Well, time to go overkill. She poisoned me. Yep. Looks like uh, the military has come to break it up. These guys are military. Uh, the, that's not just... Uh, these aren't train conductors that we're beating up. That would be pretty funny. Now, one thing about the backbreaker is that if you charge it up long enough, let's see if I can get it here. Maybe? Nah, no, it doesn't look like it. I could have sworn that if you charged it up long enough, you'd actually do your fatality out of Berserk mode, and I thought Boris was the only character who could do that, but it looks like I was off on that. But yeah, as you can see, uh, White Russian is, it makes the enemies quite explodey. Which is pretty fun to play around with, admittedly. I haven't really used it too much beyond its Berserk mode, so uh, I don't know how effective it is, but... I guess we'll see this uh, chapter. Hey, 
Don't be like that, you jerk. One annoying thing about these uh, military guys is that they have pepper spray and that poisons you and it's really annoying. The hitbox for it is really weird. It doesn't seem like the spray itself actually affects you. You can walk into it after it's out and not get poisoned, but it has it, like shoots out this square hitbox right in front of it when it's used. Mm. Yeah, White Russian doesn't really heal that much either. So uh, yeah, I can't really recommend this one. Uh, I suppose, strictly speaking, Rose Kennedy is actually better, but uh, this is definitely more fun to use. As you can see, we've got a chainsaw here, and we're just going to work uh, doing some uh, woodworking projects. Well, substituting wood for human flesh and bone, of course. And like most weapons that give you these exceptionally violent special kills, uh, these don't seem to produce necro either. The chainsaw is actually not a very good weapon, but again, it's fun to mess around with. That was really bizarre. That guy was like mid-air when that needle hit him, but he hadn't come back down yet. What's weird is it looks like it should have gone past him. Sometimes the hitbox in this hitboxes in this game are just really funny like that. Uh, I love doing that. Boris is pretty fun to play with, though. Honestly, all the characters are good. It's just uh, your matter of preference on which one you like the most. Oh, this is a really dumb part coming up. Alright, so the gimmick here is we have to keep play keep away with the walkie-talkie. Apparently we can't just smash the stupid thing. So we have to just keep it from these guys. Yeah, we can use this pretty much infinitely, it'll never break. That would make sense, I guess. And yeah, this is where the poison from uh, the military officers on board the train really starts to become annoying. There we go. Love getting that uh, brain matter out there. If they happen to grab the walkie-talkie, you have a couple seconds to get it back from them. So it's not the end of the world if they grab it. I'm just keeping it in my hands here because it's safer than let it, risk letting them grab it. But I do need the heal at some point. See, he grabbed it there, but I got it away from him quick enough. There's a couple of... well, actually, no, this, there's a few weird gimmick sections like this, but this is probably the silliest one, is what I was getting at. Eh, uh, this is just really boring. At the very least, I get... It is pretty amusing that I'm just bludgeoning these guys to death slowly with a walkie-talkie. <laughs> hmm. Looks like the skeleton has become a full-formed person at this point. Alright, what's the good news? Cool. You gonna tell me the bad news? I guess uh, we're left to infer the bad news for ourselves. Now, you can see these rifle women here, they will actually, if you leave them alone for long enough, they will ready their rival rifles and take a shot at you. The rifles, confusingly, are way weaker than actual pistol shots, probably because, uh, just because they always have it, they don't want it to be too unfair. It takes them quite a bit of time to actually ready the shot, though, so you can either run up to them and dash kick them like this, no, okay, or the safer option is to just dodge out of the plane from which they're firing.
This level actually is notable for having one of my least favorite enemy sets. The uh, junky women are very obnoxious with those needles on this level, and there's just a constant stream of poison from the military officers. It's really frustrating. I still need to beat the arena, or get to wave 10 on the arena mode for this level, but it is just so obnoxious. I have yet to find my character that I can do it really easily with. Also, one thing to note is that we're on top of the roof of the train right now, so uh, when you throw characters into the air, they will actually be blown backwards. Now this guy's chucking grenades at us. Uh, we can actually pick the grenades up and toss them. Oh, tch, tch, that was close. I keep forgetting that when you're in a dash, you can't do the standard throw or grab. And when uh, enemies are laying on top of the grenades, you do get those nice uh, chunky gib effects. Yeah, this uh, level is just really obnoxious because the playing field is really narrow. There's a lot of hazards at all times. It can be very tough at times. That was weird. Yeah, no, no good doing the trying to do the aerial throws here. Get in here. Yeah, your slide kick doesn't work as effectively from the left side of the screen. One thing you do have going for you is that the gang members and the military officers are against each other, at least in this version of the level. In the arena mode, that's not the case, but here uh, it is. So we don't have to worry about them too much ganging up on us when they're all on the same screen. Now here comes the most annoying part of the level. See that sign? Jump, or else you get knocked over. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but it sure is annoying. Jump. That's easier for characters like Natasha or Sergei, who have very high jump. For uh, Boris and Yvonne, you gotta be a bit more particular with the timing. I haven't really had much reason to use Berserk Mode. I don't use Berserk Mode too often, mostly because I'm not that great at this game. So I like to have it for the healing. Oh, this is pretty easy for me. Uh, Vlad, sorry, getting my names mixed up here. Alright, now we're past the point where there's any hazards, really, so that's nice at least. And the uh, thugs are still fighting the uh, military personnel, so that's also helpful. Oh. Yeah, definitely don't want to get hit by that. Like I said, you do have a pretty generous amount of time to get out of the way. To the point where it isn't actually a bad idea to just run up to them and uh, jump to kick them. Ah, <laughs> yeah, Boris is way too slow for that. I think there's going to be more grenade guys. Ugh, I hate those needles. Actually, I'm just going to cancel out the poison here. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about with the hitbox being really weird and the gas being very non-indicative. Ah, uh, if the grenades are just going to blow these guys up, we'll let that happen. I'm I'm totally okay with that, honestly. Let's get that out of here. Yeah, as you can see, the AI is not very bright about avoiding those things. Again, very fun to watch. Get this out of here. Oop. Let's just get to the end of the screen, so... Uh, okay, uh... Yeah, I don't... I don't think this is supposed to... Um, yeah, okay, um, I'm walking on air right now. Uh, dev team, if you see this video, <laughs> you might need to patch this. Okay, well, th this works, I guess. Okay, so, uh, yeah, Boris can just walk on air, That that works too. I don't know if there's supposed to be a wall there that stops you, but uh, apparently there isn't. Oh, yeah, this part's really annoying. Okay, so the tracks will rattle, train will come on, anybody standing there? Th yeah, yeah, that happens. So uh, try not to be standing here when the train comes by. Now I know what you're thinking. Wow, this would be really annoying and a really annoying gimmick for a boss fight, and you'd be correct. Alright, it looks like uh, Boris does actually some have some amount of invincibility while doing that. I wasn't sure if it was like uh, the uh, suplex that Yvonne can do. 
However, the timing seems to be a lot more narrow, though. One nice thing, if uh, enemies are convulsing on the rattling tracks, you, they won't be killed by it. You can still get the necro out of them. Yeah, let's get out of the way. Just get this. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not getting the time to get it. Jeez, there's a ton of these guys. Whenever there's a really bad hazard like this in a level, very frequently they will expect you to let it kill a lot of the enemies for you. So uh, there tends to be crowds that don't let you get too many ne too many opportunities to get necro. I really need to heal. Oop, I think I'm having frame drops here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have the best computer for fraps, unfortunately. Ooh, that was close. That definitely would have gotten me if I was there. Although, it looks like the frames only drop to 30 FPS, so uh, that's what I'm recording at anyway, so it shouldn't be too big of an issue. Ugh. Yeah, this goes on for way longer than is necessary. There's no trains come by during these in-between sections. Alright, so here's a gimmick boss. Just like the last boss, we can't actually directly beat this guy. What we have to do is hit him with a flashbang while he's standing on a rattling train track, and while he's blinded, the train will hit him. Obviously, he can survive this more than one time. Whoop. Whoop. Yeah, this is really tricky. We gotta... You have to be a bit tight with your t Ah! Yeah, that stupid train. You can't see what's going on. Ugh. Yeah, this guy is really annoying. Alright, that's the first time. You know, Vlad, it would be helpful if you threw out more of those grenades just uh, at once than when I... Okay, what am I trying to say here? Uh, Vlad, throw more grenades out than one. Don't wait for me to throw one and then throw me another. Oh, this guy might actually kill me. One more, though. Okay. This. Alright, there we go. We win! And I actually managed to do that level without dying. That's a rare thing. Ah, uh, don't worry about it. I was just killing a ton of people like I always do. Hmm. Sounds like a good as lead as any. Oh boy. <laughs> I'd like to see what weird is for this game. Trust me, it does get pretty weird. Well, so is Boris. Alright, well, best of luck to you, too. Alright, but yeah, we completed Chapter 4. Uh, that went a lot more smoothly than I was expecting it to. I was expecting a couple to die a couple of times this level. And I don't really play as Boris that much, so uh, I'm surprised I did okay as him. But yeah, next time is Chapter 4, and we'll be heading to the club. So I hope to see you then, and please, have a nice day.